Hello and welcome, it's Kyle. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some millionaire investing advice I wish I received when I was 18 years old. So I'm going to be looking at nine steps which you should follow as a teenager in order to set yourself up financially for the rest of your life. Also going to be dropping some bonus tips such as what are the best fields of study to get into to ensure you actually get a job, which ones should you preferably stay away from and maybe be slightly cautious of, also going to be discussing some easy side hustles which you can start today to earn some additional income. Do stick to the end because the last one is definitely the most important one in my opinion. But number one is also a bank. So as you guys can see, there's going to be a lot of information heading your way. I wanted to, to create this video for the 18 year old Kyle I want to ask because I know it would have saved me a lot of time and also a lot of trial and error. So with that said, let's dive in. So step one, always have a financial backup plan. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you wanna go ahead and choose a degree which will actually get your job when you land up leaving university. Now, if there's one step you listen to, please listen to this one because this is crucial. Now, let me explain because when you leave school, you probably don't even think about this. And looking back already at my life, when I left school, what you don't realize is how complicated and how challenging the world actually is. So what you gotta do, you need to go ahead and choose a degree which allows you something to fall back on in case your personal ambitions that you may want to venture into when you leave school don't actually work out. The sad reality with personal ambitions like starting a business or going into sports is that 95% of the time these things actually don't work out. And having that thing to fall back onto can honestly be an absolute lifesaver. So what I recommend you do, and even if you're not 100% certain about doing this specific degree or field of study, as long as you have a slight spine tingling interest in it, it's a good thing to go with because having that thing to fall back on, it allows you to get a job in case your personal ambitions don't work out, and trust me, it will also greatly increase your earning potential in the future. A good point in case would be myself. Coming out of school, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but one thing I did was I had a slight interest in finance and the world of finance. So I studied a degree called Chartered Accountancy. And honestly, looking back, this was probably the best decision I could have ever done. So what do you do if you come out the gates of school and you don't even have an idea what you wanna do? What's the best advice? Go to Google, YouTube, look at what you are looking at on a consistent basis. This will be a great starting point for showing you where your interests lie. Now, the next step after this, would be don't go rushing right into college. Maybe go ahead and get some experience, do some job shadowing, but don't get too comfortable doing that. I highly recommend you start off, look at Google, look at YouTube, see where your interests lie, and use that to guide you as to work and specific fields of industry that you want to go ahead and get experience in. Once you've got that experience, hopefully then you can find you fine tune which degree you want to get into. Now, another thing you can do is study a part-time degree. Now, this part-time degree you may study may cover a field which you have a particular interest in. And this is great because studying a part-time degree affords you the opportunity of, first of all, still learning something and at the same time making some cash. Now, this is an important one, and that is don't shoot for any degree that no employer cares about. You want some millionaire investing advice, so I'm gonna give you the harsh truth over here. You need to shoot for degrees which require specialized knowledge. Those degrees which are very hard to get into. For example, doctor, actuary, chartered accountancy. When you go ahead into these fields that require specialized knowledge, you're gonna find that they will be in high demand and you'll be able to get a job quite easily when you then leave that university. So I wanted to do some digging for you guys and find those degrees which have the lowest unemployment rates. So I found four links which I'm going to put in the description down below for you guys. But it was quite hard actually to come across some decent and comparable and timely data. But from what I can see, um, I noticed a few of the following trends. Now, the first thing I noticed across all of the data is that some of the fields which had the best representation in terms of the lowest unemployment rate are the medical and the education field. The other trend I noticed is that specific studies in the fields of science and engineering are also quite popular. And I would also recommend that you guys go ahead and check the last two links in the description down below as they have the most timely and up-to-date data from what I could see. I also wanted to add something here which may be valuable for some and this is not to bash a degree at all. All degrees I respect and they have a purpose and they are extremely valuable but that is to be cautious of even popular and well-mentioned 
degrees. An example being computer science. This is a tale of two stories and let me explain. Now, this is a highly specialized field with good pay, but still many graduates struggle to find jobs leaving the gates of a university. Now, from my experience, from talking to friends and discussing with them a little bit, these are um, friends of mine who are in the computer sciences degree, they say that there is tremendous potential for earning and that is if you go ahead and land those jobs in your Facebook and in your Amazon companies. Now I get it, this is the allure of computer science. You head onto YouTube and you get many software engineering graduates um, sharing their salaries and the details and you guys see how much they're earning and they really do earn a phenomenal amount of money some of them. But this is part of the tale. Now let's look at the other side. So on the other side of the coin, I found two links which supports this argument. And the first study found that computer science graduates leaving the university struggle to find jobs because one, they lack the soft skills required in the workplace, and two, that they struggle to transfer their knowledge from their degree into the workplace. And this is why many employers struggle to find computer science graduates to employ. Now, another study found that computer science graduates leaving university, their employers will take 50% longer than other firms looking to employ graduates, so it will take longer to get employed. And the study also found that computer science graduates, the firms that hire them, want students of exceptional quality, only the creme de la creme. So what can we learn from this brief example? Do your research. Leaving school, please just do your research into any degree. You are going to commit a significant amount of your years to this, and you wanna make sure that you're selecting the right degree. So a tip for you essentially, look at what is my employability first. You wanna choose a degree which can get you employed. That is the most important. And then second to that, you can consider the pay scale. I know leaving school, probably all you look at is pay scale, but I think there's a fine balance to be had. So step two, you wanna go ahead and get a credit card and build up that credit score. And that is where it stops. If you're 18 years old or you know 20, young 20s, you wanna go ahead and after this video or even after the step, stop it, pause it, go to your preferred bank of choice and apply to get a credit card. Now, I know you want to stay away from debt, but having a credit card doesn't mean you're going to get yourself into debt. You just need to quite simply be reasonable with it. Now, you may ask yourself, why do I want a very good credit score? Well, if you want to get loans to finance certain investments, such as purchasing a property, which is probably one of the first big investments which anyone will make coming out of university, you'll want to have a very good credit score, trust me, because it's going to affect the interest rate the bank's gonna give you, and it's going to save you a lot of additional costs down the line if you have a good credit score. So as I say, there's no better time than the present. Use the system to your advantage rather than let the system take advantage of you. So what's a reasonable and safe way to use a credit card? Just use it to make small purchases, things like purchasing a shirt online or buying a cup of coffee. These are very small and affordable purchases. And come in the month, when it's due, you go ahead and you pay off that debt. Easy peasy, rinse and repeat this process, and within no time, you'll have a very good credit score. So it's quite simple. The only time you want to use your credit card for certain purchases is when you can actually afford the purchase in cash. This way, you'll get a great credit score, which will help you down the line when you want to finance certain large purchases, which may require a good credit score. So step number three, save and invest. Two separate but very important things. Now, the next four steps will all talk about this notion of saving, but these are all very important and you wanna start this as early as possible. So for those of you who are already employed, you might not even know it, but you may already be saving because there's something called a retirement fund and every month when you receive your salary, a portion of that salary is taken and put into that retirement fund. But in addition to this, if you want that millionaire investing advice, don't just stop there. Go ahead and take some of that salary, uh, the amount that you've saved at the end of the month, and invest it. Invest it into something like a tax-free interest account or into a low-cost index fund. So you wanna start saving as early as possible because the earlier you start saving, then the quicker you're going to reach that millionaire goal of yours. But important to this is you don't just wanna save, but you want to invest. Investing, my friends, is touted as the eighth wonder of the world. And there's a reason for this. Through investing, you can go ahead and over 30 years per se, turn $1 into $100. That is the power of investing. 
Now I'm going to include a little insert over here. It's going to show you what $10,000 would turn into after X amount of years at a certain interest rate. Just give that a look and you guys will see what the power of investing really is. So we are now on to step number four. And this is an easy one. It's not one I'm going to elaborate on long, but you want to essentially go ahead and during this period of your life, especially while you're young, try to be as frugal as possible. Now, I'm not a fan of being absolutely bare bones in this life. I think life should be enjoyed, but I feel like you should find a healthy balance between living a good life and also saving money and just avoiding any additional unnecessary expenses. So how are you going to be frugal? Quite simply, go ahead and get an Excel. Look at monthly what you're spending money on and then go ahead for each one of those items and just be reasonable. Ask yourself, okay, where over here can I go ahead and cut out or cut down on these costs? So why do you want to do this? This will help you save money faster and reach financial freedom quicker. Okay, so we are now on to step number five. And step number five is essentially in life, you always want to choose the cheapest option. So when it comes to opening a bank account, align yourself with a bank which has the lowest monthly fees or no fees at all, if that's possible. When it comes to getting insurance for your car or health insurance, go ahead and align yourself with the insurer who has the lowest premiums, assuming obviously that it also meets your needs in terms of health and your requirements for cover. This is a very straightforward step and something that can be applied to any decision you make in life, but it's something you want to do, especially if you're making large commitments over your lifetime to these companies. Things like banks and insurers, these are things that you're going to be paying every month. So it's worthwhile doing a little bit of due diligence and saving yourself a lot of money over the long term. So in this day and age, what can you do to ensure that you are aligned with the most um, affordable and reasonable company? You wanna go ahead and quite simply just do a Google search. Look at blog posts, websites, there's tons of information out there. In order to be a little bit more specific, something you can do is go into Google, type in the name of your country, followed by the thing you are looking at, such as banking or insurance, and then after that, the word comparison. And you'll get a ton of results with a ton of information and just sift through that and quite quickly you'll get an idea of what is the best option for you. So step number six, don't give in to a thing called lifestyle inflation. Now I'm sure each and every single one of you are going to go ahead out into this world and you're going to either climb the corporate ladder and you're going to get a very good salary one day or you're going to go ahead and start your business and you're going to do extremely well there. But when this happens, you guys are going to be making more and more money and those paychecks are going to be getting bigger and bigger and there's going to be a temptation that is there. That is to afford greater and more expensive things. And my advice for you for this step is don't give in to those. If you could live your life as you were before without having this massive huge paycheck, why do you need to change it, right? If you wanna go ahead and save as much as possible, my point for this step is just don't go in, don't give in to lifestyle inflation. Just live as you were. That way you can save more money quicker and reach financial freedom sooner. So step number seven is going to quite simply be start a side hustle. Now, for those of you out there who are 18 years old and you may already have a job, you may be working a nine to five. And nine to five, you know, these are quite long hours, they are quite draining and they take a lot out of you. But if you wanna go ahead and reach that goal sooner rather than later, it is not impossible to start a side hustle even if you're working a nine to five. I've done it myself and by starting that side hustle, you're going to generate more cash that you can save and obviously then you'll be able to reach your financial goal sooner. So tip time, what side hustle can you do? Well, I need you to do something you are passionate about because when you're working a nine to five, you wanna make sure after that that if you are going to be doing a side hustle, it brings you at least a little bit of enjoyment. So what can you do? There are many options available. Some easy things you can do right now would be tutoring online or starting an e-commerce business or going ahead and starting a YouTube channel or creating a podcast where you talk about things you love and enjoy. And another thing you can also do is list services or things you're really good at for sale on Fiverr. These are, in my opinion, a few quick and easy side hustles which can allow you and help you to start generating some extra cash flow on the side. So we are now on to step eight, and this is going to be a quick one, um, not something that's mentioned out there a lot, but something that I highly value. And that is that you wanna find your passion in life early because this is gonna have a knock-on effect on your earning potential, in my opinion, for the rest of your life. And the reason I say this is this, if you go ahead and work a job 
that you are not passionate about, you're going to find that it's going to be hard to climb the corporate ladder because you're going to be going up against people who, let's say, are passionate about their job. They're going to probably work harder than you. And just in general, you're going to be at a disadvantage doing something that you're not passionate about. Whereas if you go ahead and you find your passion early, you are going to go ahead and whether it be working for an employer or starting a business, you're going to climb that corporate ladder so much faster or if it's a business that you're starting and you're passionate about it, you're bound to be successful. The research indicates it. So I recommend that you find your passion as soon as possible. And I also don't believe that it's too hard to find your passion. I personally think all you gotta do is look at what are the things you're searching on Google, what are the things that you are watching on YouTube, and you'll very quickly get a good idea of where your interests lie. So give that a think. So we are on to the final step. And the final step is you wanna say no to student loan debt or any debt for that matter. Now, believe me, this is much easier said than done. Now, in my opinion, this is the number one killer that prevents anyone from reaching their financial goals, and that is debt. And in this case, if you're an 18 year old looking to go ahead and study that degree, the specific type of debt which will prevent you from reaching your financial goals is that student debt. So I know what you're thinking. You're sitting there saying, but Carl, you just told me that I need to study a degree which is going to get me into student debt. This is true. And that I must stay away from debt. That is the point of the step, which is also true. But there are ways around it. And you do need that degree because it will increase your earning potential. And you do need to learn how to deal with that student debt as soon as possible. Because the sooner you can deal with it, then the earlier you can save and start investing. So how can we deal with this debt? Well, I came across a brilliant article which we are going to go through now. So I found this article titled Nine Shocking Tips to Help You Avoid Student Debt. It was done by Unity College. I highly recommend you guys go through it in your spare time. But I'm quickly going to discuss four of the most important points on this list. Okay, so the first one we're going to discuss is point one, which is do a degree which allows you to select a hybrid learning option. Now, what is the benefit of hybrid learning? Hybrid learning allows you to decrease the fees for the year. And what is hybrid learning? Well, hybrid learning is where you do some courses online and some courses in person, as opposed to doing all the courses in person. Obviously, these are going to come with higher fees. So hybrid learning is a viable option if you want to go ahead and decrease your student debt. Now, the next two that I'm going to mention are quite similar, point seven and eight. Point seven says find work on campus. Obviously, this is quite practical because you are going to be spending some of your time on campus. And if you have work on campus, well, then it's a great way to kill two birds with one stone. Do your studying as well as earning some cash on the side. And obviously also point eight, get a part-time job. Now, probably the most reasonable one if you're going through university is doing something like tutoring people who are a year younger than you. And yeah, it's just another simple way to use some knowledge, some skill which you already have to your advantage in order to earn some additional cash. Now, the final point I want to mention in this website, but definitely not the least most important, is number nine. Go ahead and contact your university, reach out to your financial department and ask them what are the repayment options for my student debt. You may find that there are quite unique ways which you can arrange your student debt to be paid which don't incur any interest which is probably the best option for anyone out there looking to finance their student loans. So contact your university, ask them are there any interest free options available for my student debt and that will be a great starting point to help you reduce your student debt. So there are two things I just wish I could add to this list. The first one is go ahead and start saving even before you get to the age of 18 and you need to go to university. This will just help with having a little bit of cash already up front, which you can use to pay off your student debt. And the second thing I just wanted to add is that while you're at university, there are going to be many temptations to spend some additional cash. And similar to one of the previous steps, you just want to be still as frugal as possible. If you can, instead of going to the university res, rather just stay at home with your parents, it's going to save you a ton of cash. And another thing you can also just try and avoid is again debt. Things like personal loans, auto loans, credit card debt. You want to stay as far away from these as possible. I think this is just general knowledge at this point, but honestly, just stay away from any type of loan or debt. And as my granddad used to say, if you can't pay for it in cash, don't even think about it. So that brings us to the end for this one. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. There was a lot of information, 
but hopefully you can take a lot from it, apply it in your life and reach your financial goals as soon as possible. I'll see you guys all in the next one.